I'm Stephen Rodder and I'm a biogas enthusiast. What is biogas? Well biogas is a, is a flammable gas that is produced during fermentation of vegetable matter. It could be uh, manures or grass. It's a mixture of mainly carbon dioxide and methane gas. The methane is the flammable one, the carbon dioxide is just the passenger. And if you can get a process where you eliminate some of the carbon dioxide, you get a, um, you lift the calorific value. Now the gas is useful for um, burning, like with cooking, water heating, or you can use it in an internal combustion engine. Uh, this gas bag is um, it's a lay flat ducting which is a, a tubular sleeve open at both ends and I've got the ends in a bag of water as a seal. Right. So you're just putting weights on it now? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just hasten it a little bit more by putting a little bit more weight than I normally do. All right. Turn the gas on. Okay. If you can see it. Yeah, so it's just a gas ring. Yeah. And then I'll pop the top on just to improve the efficiency. Not a very nice looking top, but I made my own burner before uh, out of tuna cans. Out of tuna cans? Yes. Yeah. Aren't we a little bit close? <laughs> <laughs> In here, these are my leaching drums. Uh, I've got two methods. This one here is a fully flooded method. So I, I put the grass in here, top it up with water. Every now and again I push the, um, the grass back down and I've got to devise a satisfactory method of withdrawing the fluid. At the moment I just put a hose down there and um, siphon it off but I don't get the, all the contents and it's really too heavy to um, to move around much. So that's a flooded method. It takes about a week before it starts to fizz a little bit. It's fermenting, so, you know, it's not producing methane, it's producing carbon dioxide and, and other fermentation gases. It doesn't matter whether the air gets at it, by the way. I thought you had to do it anaerobically, that's without air, exclude it from air. So I screwed the top down really hard and just left it. And anyway, when I opened the drum, I found only half the contents left and a big split down the side of the drum. <laughs> and this one here, the, the drum has holes in the base. So I, um, I've, I've got green grass in there at the moment. I chuck a bucket full of water over it. It works, it percolates its way down. And then I siphon it out at the bottom here down into a bucket down there. Well, that's a good excuse. Every time man complains about getting the lawn mowed, I say, oh, I need it a little bit longer yet. <laughs> you listen very carefully, you can hear it bubbling. I just heard it then. Okay, I'm just going to um, feed it now, so I'll take some content out. See how dark it is? That's the um, solids coming. It'll go light in a minute like beer. No, it won't. Doesn't want to do that today. This is the stuff that's just come out of the um, digester now. And this is the, the solids that have come out with it. Great stuff for the garden. It's very soft um, material. It's sort of soft and spongy. And this is the um, the influent, it's uh, leaching off the uh, of some um, scraps. Actually, it's it, household scraps. It's not um, grass. The grass stuff is darker in colour. If I put that in first, I'd, I'd flood it, and you know, then, then all sorts of things would go wrong. I think I'm onto a good thing because it means I've got control over good quality biogas. I can pour it in and just a few hours later I've got the gas up again for my uh, water heater. 
Right, hopefully we're going to get a reaction from that. Yes, here, here she comes. It's all fizzing and foaming like beer. The biogas that's now generated will have a higher calorific value. That's carbon dioxide coming off, so, so that's good. So I use this here. We've got news here. A couple of teas up. I should turn it off first, I suppose. There we are, grass power. Literally. If you're looking at the outside is urethane foam. So that's the that's in, insulation. I've just put the foam on and painted it. Inside that I've got um, uh, concrete, um, a concrete cylinder. It, I constructed it in, um, in panels. Then I strapped the outside and, and plastered, plastered up that. It's got a plywood top. The fluid comes right up into here. This, this is the moat section here. And oh, that's, just, that's just insulation. The digestion process really runs better at um, say 35 degrees. Well, that's, that's, that's the optimum. But uh, if, if you can get it, say, high 20s, uh, it'll, it'll come along quite well. But of course with uh, uh, the weather, the icy rain and stuff, the temperature falls off. It takes a little while to do so because there's such a um, thermal mass there. But uh, it means every, every time you add new food to it, you have to have that up to temperature, otherwise it causes a heat loss. So the only place the gas is present, apart from the bubbles coming up, is actually in a little gas base there. One of the easiest ways of um, keeping the thing up to temperature is to uh, get it to supply its own gas. And of course the trade-off is um, if you're using the gas from the digester to heat itself, you need to have more feedstock. <laughs> so that's a catch in itself. Here's the pipe coming out of the foam here into a T-junction. Now there's um, it's sitting in a, 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 a flooded vessel for a, for a gas seal. So any, water, any fluid coming down the moat goes the down route, the gas goes the up route. The gas pipe goes down into another vessel where the, the rusty um, cans are, where it strips off the hydrogen sulfide and from there it goes out through a valve and in, in the hose into the uh, gas bag. It works okay in the summer, in the warmer months, but everything slows right off in the, uh, in the cooler times. Uh, so I'm thinking that I'd have to construct a, a heat hut. It's just a, a, a solar trap with a, uh, a wood booster, wood burner booster. I've got grass, the apples, the household scraps. If I'm careful, and get a, an efficient system, I theoretically I'm sitting just outside the, the envelope at the moment, but if I'm careful, I might be able to realise it just totally from this place here. And of course the, um, uh, the fluid or the effluent that comes out of the digester has to go back to the lawn and the garden because uh, otherwise I'm mining it. Um, so, so I should have a closed system right, right through. Um, the material coming out when it's this, this is um, it's been out a day or so now. It smells faintly of silage, mainly of fresh water. It's been all washed through, and you can either put it in the garden straight like that, but there's biogas potential left in it. So I want to put that in bags. 
uh, to mature over the summer and give me what remaining biogas th there is in it. You can see that we've got gas in there. The, the, this is um, the leftover potential. I'm, I'm trying to get the rest of the potential and I'm experimenting to see where, um, what works best, how much fluid I should put in there because uh, the less fluid, the less heating I've got to do, or got to be done, and it just sits around in the sun. So this is a miniature of what I intend to do. You can't see it, can you? See that? Right. The match is burning really. Burning the packet. But that shows you about biogas burning. It's it's got a slower flame speed, you know, so it just doesn't go boof like it does in the movies where it's like that, you know. Um, it, it burns fairly slow. You, you can see it coming. As a matter of fact, when I used to light the, the gas in the drum there, just to burn it off, I could hold it up about two feet above the uh, burner and it'd burn in the air. You just see this flame flickering in the air and it's going to run its way down onto the burner. Okay, this goes out in the, in the sunshine again, and um, probably late this afternoon we probably have the same amount of gas again. But uh, I really should have um, been testing to see how much gas does come off here, but theoretically I already know, so I've, I'm in, I know the ballpark amount anyway. Which is? Which is probably about 40% left. So, so probably uh, I realise 60% in the, in the um, leaching process and putting it in the digester there and the last 40% 40, 40 or so here. Uh, luckily I've got a sort of a stop cap there because I can pick up fallen fruit. We, we have a lot of apples and stuff fall into the ground that got a little bit of rot, bird strike and all the rest of it that aren't good enough for that house. So I chop them up and, and it comes through really well. I put them through a, an insincorator grinder um, and I found that if they're not softened, they bounce out of the grinder all, over, all, all around the place. So, so it's best to have them soaking in a little bit of um, water for about a week and they start to fizz. And when they fizz, uh, you put them through the grinder. They, it, you can virtually just pour it through, um, no trouble at all. And, and then I store that for maybe a week or so and it, um, it fizzes up really well. It smells wonderful, like cider. Pour that into the digester and it's away.